Hi, welcome to History Teaching Tools and Tips, a series that introduces strategies that encourage effective practice and meaningful learning in history and social studies instruction. My name is Alan Guidry, and I'm an associate professor and program coordinator of history education at East Carolina University. This segment focuses on tips for presenting a lecture. The tips shared were gathered from veteran teachers and professors who have demonstrated that lecture can be engaging and meaningful. This is the first of a two-part segment, and this part presents six key elements of effective lecture. I hope you enjoy the segment. To create our list of six tips for effective lecture in history and social studies, we surveyed ten master teachers, five veteran high school teachers with a reputation for engaging students through lecture, and five university professors who are noted for their ability to lecture. From their responses, six clear best practices emerged. First, good lecturers have deep and broad content knowledge. Second, good lecturers are enthusiastic and engaging. Third, effective lecturers present content by telling a story. Fourth, they make use of images in their lectures. Fifth, good lecturers not only ask students engaging questions, but also encourage questions of their students. And finally, good lecturers find a way to make the content relevant. Let's dig a little deeper into these six practices. In order to take full advantage of lecture as a content delivery tool, the lecturer must have a deep and broad knowledge of the content to be taught. Broad in the sense that he or she must be able to connect content from one lesson to the next and one unit to the next, and deep in that he or she must be able to provide substantive examples and details to paint a vivid picture for the audience. Many of the other elements in this list are contingent upon the lecturer having this breadth and depth of knowledge. For instance, broad and deep content knowledge assists the lecturer in developing rich questions and building relevance with students through meaningful examples. A key rule of thumb as you prepare for a lecture is to know more than you teach. With an overarching 30,000-foot view of the content and armed with rich and intriguing details and examples, the lecturer in history or social studies must work to design and deliver an enthusiastic and engaging lecture. Enthusiasm certainly starts with a passion for the discipline, but enthusiasm is not defined merely by energy and presentation. There are really two interrelated parts to an enthusiastic and engaging lecture. First, a lecture must be designed to engage students. Thought-provoking questions, engaging images, rich examples, and a provocative thesis are all key design elements in an engaging lecture. These must be generated and embedded purposefully and are often contingent upon the lecturer having a particular angle, slant, or argument that can serve as a point of discussion and discourse around the lecture. In fact, in his article, Guide on the Stage, Jason Stacy argues that there are three types of lectures history and social studies teachers can use to engage students. Narrative lectures that tell a story, expository lectures that expose an issue, and thesis-driven lectures that argue a point. The latter two types are intended to generate interest and discourse among students rather than just serving as information dumps. In this lesson flow map for history education lessons at East Carolina University, you can see that the content delivery section of the lesson is situated as a place where a story is told or a phenomena is presented for later investigation and inquiry. Aside from being designed in an engaging way, lectures must be delivered with a certain level of enthusiasm. Use of voice inflection, movement around the room, animation in the demeanor of the lecturer, and use of humor all go a long way to fighting the Ben Stein, Bueller, Bueller stereotype of the history social studies lesson. I have found from my experience that if you show them you enjoy it, they will enjoy it. As you prepare your lecture, be sure to design and deliver it with an eye toward being enthusiastic and engaging, and your students will come along with you. It probably goes without saying that you have had that one memorable teacher that could enthrall the class with their ability to tell a good tale. This is a vital skill for the expert lecturer. Storytelling doesn't merely serve to entertain the audience, although a good lecturer is often a good entertainer. A well-spun yarn has a decided beginning, a rise to action, a climax, and a resolution. So, too, should a well-presented lecture. 
woven into a good story are plot points that connect pieces and paint a picture in the mind of the audience. If we seek to tell a story organized with interconnected characters and events, our students are more likely to remember. Furthermore, a lecture, like a good story, has something everyone can identify and connect with, making the learning personal and real. To help students organize the pieces, teachers using lectures should employ some organizational tool to help students situate content. Graphic organizers and outlines work well in this regard. And in recent years, Cornell or two-column notes have gained favor. This system allows students to note main ideas in the left-hand column and details, vocabulary, and relevant examples in the right-hand column. This often aligns with the outline form that most teachers use to organize lectures, so it can be a handy instructional tool. It also is a great improvement upon the bad practice of guided or fill-in-the-blank notes. By presenting organized lectures that tell a story and paint a picture of the content, teachers can enhance the likelihood that content will be retained. One element that our high school teachers brought up repeatedly was the need to use images in concert with a content lecture. They cited this need for visualization as a means for helping students connect with material that students would otherwise see as foreign. The history professors noted that sources, among which images would be a subset, were helpful in generating discourse and opening the door for asking questions. This need for using images to help tell the story aligns with the Wisconsin thinking like a historian's thread of through their eyes. If we can get students to connect with the past and see past people's lives and experiences as not so different from our own, we increase the likelihood that they will find purpose and meaning in the content. For lectures to truly be engaging, the lines of communication must go in two directions. A good lecture is really a lecture and a discussion and thus question asking is a must. I'm a big fan of teachers scripting questions within their lecture notes, but not all great discussions happen that way, and the effective lecturer must know how to craft deep and thought-provoking questions in many contexts. This is not necessarily an easy task. One aid that helps us craft questions that build upon one another is to understand Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's Taxonomy, published in 1956, provides a framework for categorizing educational goals. The subsequent revisions in 2001 to the original taxonomy provide a framework from which to scaffold questions in a lecture from factual recall to in-depth analysis and evaluation. Playing off of Bloom's Taxonomy, others have designed guides for levels of questions teachers might use in instruction. Costa's levels of questioning have seen popular use of late and serve as a helpful guide to teachers as they build questions into their lectures. By asking increasingly complex questions, teachers can carry lectures beyond mere factual recall and can help students begin to understand and articulate the complex nuances of history and social studies content. Finally, all of our experts talked at some point about building relevance into lectures. With technological advances happening at such a rapid rate, students seem to be further and further removed from the nature of civilization just 100 years ago. This disconnect is a major hurdle for teachers of history and must be overcome if one is to lecture successfully. Our experts talked about the need to articulate the importance of historic events to today and not merely the importance at the time. Our classroom teachers commented consistently on linking the lecture content to student interests and cited the success of the musical Hamilton as evidence of the effectiveness of relevance in connecting to an audience. Those same teachers also cited the importance of humor, current events, and even pop culture in making learning meaningful. According to educational theorist David Ausubel, meaningful learning occurs when individuals connect new material to what he or she already knows or has learned. Ausubel said, the single most important factor influencing learning is what the learner already knows. Ascertain this and teach accordingly. End quote. The teacher who aspires to become an expert in the art of lecture is well versed to remember Ausubel's premise. Hope you have enjoyed this segment on tips for effective lecture in history and social studies. 
I encourage you to check out part two of this segment where I share some examples of the tips in action and talk to some of our experts about why these elements are so important. See you next time.